Well, what's going on, everybody? It's Monday. What's up, dudes? How we doing? We don't stream tomorrow, so we got a little special costume in. I am a piece of toast <laughs> with jelly on there. Hello, Schmo. Welcome in. Masi, welcome in. Guys, how are you? Let me tell you. I am a piece of jelly toast. Jelly toast. Yes. Everybody. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome in. Welcome in. We have something special for you guys today, okay? Something super duper spicy. What the fuck? A piece of toast with jelly? Yeah, dude. And I, my wife has the other side that's uh, peanut butter. Because together we make a delicious sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. Let me tell you. All right. Anyways, enough of that stuff, right? I'm excited. It's, uh, it's Monday. We made it through the weekend. Hell yeah. We have a special guest today. Call me Sal is here. Leader of the Sal's Pals. Everybody give a warm welcome to Call Me Sal. And let's get him on the screen here. Boom. Look at that, man. Yo, what's going on? Emotional bro? damage. <laughs> oh, no. Someone emotional redeemed damage. emotional damage. Right yes. Thank you for being here, my dude. Dude, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be hanging out. Yes. Look at that. Since the 79, first time chatter. What's up? That's Welcome in. Welcome to the party, pal. That's your brother-in-law? Yes, senseless. Oh, man. It's all good, man. Let's keep it in the family. There all right, go. so thank you so much for being here. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man. Um, there's a lot to say, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy to be doing some Twitch streaming and contents on the way, but I come from like a touring background in live production stuff, so live events. So I toured for a long time with a nonprofit where we were like performers and technicians. I... I worked at Apple for a little bit. I toured with a giant show called Marvel Universe Live, coincidentally, where I was the uh, lead lighting tech on that show for a bit. Um, it was a massive, like, superhero stunt show. Toured with Cirque du Soleil for a little while, too. And uh, as a performer we here. No, 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 no. I, my earlier years from like age you know from high school until maybe like 24 were my performer years and then since then it was all on the production tech side you know what did you do you, as a performer so i'm sorry i have to know no, you're you're fine there was some singing there was some dancing there was some improv and acting a little bit of everything and until my knees couldn't handle it anymore <laughs> <laughs> all right uh schmo our guest today is call me sal twitch streamer of marvel snap and leader up, of the sales pals What's going on, Joe Schmo? Welcome in, man. All right, so let's. I figured we'd get into a little Q and A session first, and then we do have some special themed friendlies set up for each other afterwards, guys. So you guys get to participate in that. But why don't we start with a, a softball question here? How long have you been playing Marvel Snap? Yeah, man, it's been about five months now. Started out in the Ghost Spider season. So I picked up the game. I don't know why I'd heard about it prior, but I just was like, I got other games I was playing. I was playing a lot of Team Fight Tactics at the time and then was like, I don't have capacity for another game. But then I was just looking for something chill one night and I downloaded the game on my phone and I was like, wow, this game plays really smooth, really nice. Like yes. the music's good. The graphics is, are good like the the gyro effects you know vibrate in your phone as you play the game i was like this is really well designed and i actually hit up a buddy of mine who i remember having posted about marvel snap at some point and i was like hey man are you still playing this marvel snap game i just downloaded it it's pretty cool and he lost his mind he was like oh my god i'm so happy you're playing i want to tell you all the things about the game oh that's wonderful I, and then I was like, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to put any money in this game. I don't know if I'm actually going to keep playing it or not. And then he immediately Venmoed me 10 bucks and was like, you like move decks. Please get the season pass. You've got to have it. And I've been I've been hooked ever since, man. And then you got one of these. Oh, it just got yeah. got hooked. 
got hooked and then just couldn't couldn't give it up man it's a great game it is a great game uh yeah. sadly my my counterpite to all of this right so uh people have viewed my uh, the stream before i've heard this story but my my best friend at the time he's, st I mean, he's still my best friend but um he actually bought me the apocalypse bundle and he now doesn't play marvel snap it's like at all at all he just gave it up dang i know man it's it's rough charmy charm welcome in to yeah, you we i can't say. say we haven't spent money now welcome to the party pal yeah i mean at least the value for the season pass is there i understand that you know you may not get all the bundles and stuff but if you can fork over the ten dollars it's it's the values there definitely yeah, recommend for sure for sure i've been playing since uh the game launched so back last october it's been a minute Oh, you started out right around launch. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it was like two weeks into launch, and then, uh, yeah. So it was Miles Morales season was when I when I started going. Dang, yeah. I mean, playing since then goes a long way, right? Just even those daily missions and credits that you get from that takes you a long way. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm I'm almost collection complete, and I'm, I think I'm missing five cards. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. That's super dope. I cool, wish I could yeah. I could do better with the collection of cards that I have. I'm just a scrub, but <laughs> nah, man. What are you talking about? You're probably gonna have an infinity border before me by the end of next week. Uh, maybe. I doubt it. I'm not. I haven't been like I got the five borders, and then I'm like I'm good on conquest. Did you wait? Have you gotten any infinity borders yet? Yeah, I got five of them. Uh, I have none. Uh, what? Well, that you're uh, you do ladder mainly, no? Yeah, I mainly do ladder. Although now I'm 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 done with ladder for the season. It's conquest time, you know. Even if just to farm some boosters. Yes, people keep so. telling me to farm boosters, and I'm like, I'm, I'm good. If they the had, if they had a credit redemption in there, like four thousand medals for fifty credits or something like that, I'd be all over it. But that would be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so what is your favorite card, sir? Oh my favorite card is multiple man oh tell the, me about that the man yeah when i started out in the game uh move decks i just gravitated towards move and i had you know as you start out you don't have a ton of cards but i really love the fact that multiple man could turn from a two three into like at the very least a you know two nine spread all over the place mm -hmm. and so uh, i just played the crap out of move decks and kept adding in little pieces as i got them as i got vulture i added him in as i got cloak added that in you know, it took me a while to get Dagger, Human Torch, whatever, but I just really love the move archetype um, and figuring out that you could Hulk Buster onto a multiple man and then go spider it somewhere else. And now you that you got eight power in each lane. I was like, this is the dream. And then I can and then I can play Heimdall and just add a whole bunch more. This is amazing. So, yeah, I, I have split multiple man. Let me tell you how many times the base card of multiple man. I have now split. Where's he at man's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Dude, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's that's, that's like me and Red Skull. I've split him close to eight or nine times. Have yet to get an inked. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, Average. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, man. It's so, so annoying. Average solo plays. Welcome in, my dude. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome in. Welcome Hi. in. All right. So everybody knows my favorite card is Surfer. So I'll, I'll go opposite. We'll do my least favorite card. And, yeah. hmm. I'd, I'd probably say Wave is my least favorite card currently. Really? Why is that? Uh, <laughs> Because... How do I explain it? It it limits the game so much, like depending on what you're playing. And the answer to Wave was Mobius, and Mobius like actively cancels out in whole archetype. So I think Wave just started this endemic problem that is like they're they're throwing out band-aids to to kind of solve for it, but it's it's slowly killed off other things. Like you don't see any negative decks now yeah yeah it is mobius is a is a big 
bit of a bummer. I would love to see more negative decks, but I feel like if you do, you like have to run rogue and draw your rogue and be able to make sure that you hit the right target. You right. know, like right. otherwise you're just you're hosed. Absolutely. 100 percent. Miss Mina said Sal. What's up, Miss Mina? Sal is in 4K. Lonely Lamb. <laughs> what's going on? Welcome in. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome in. All right. So, is there a card coming up that you're interested in currently? Oh, baby, it's Werewolf by Night. You already know. Like, All right. Move decks are going to be wild, but also I feel like you don't even need to put him in necessarily like a traditional full move deck. It's just like so many decks run on reveals, and just having a Werewolf jump around. I don't know, man. I'm excited for it. I'm really excited for it. All right. I'm going to challenge you because that was easy. Werewolf comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Beyond tomorrow. <laughs> is there another card you're looking forward to? It's the, uh, what, what is her name? Firestar, I believe. Oh, in December. Okay. Yeah. Firestar is the next one that I am like super hyped on because I can see that where even if on your, because let's go over this real quick. Firestar. The effect on that one on it's a six three on reveal. Each card you played last turn gains this card's power. So in my mind, if you're playing this in a deck that runs Elsa and you play even on your turn five is a Mysterio and a hit monkey. And then you play Firestar in a lane and you fill up that lane. Now you're giving plus five power to all three of the Mysterio clones and your hit monkey. That's insane. That's nutty. You add in a zero drop, like a wasp or a, a yellow jacket or a Thor hammer or whatever it is. That's just a stupid amount of power. That sounds good. Uh, chat, Joe Schmo saying, are we going to dual pilot a conquest one? Joe, we're not going to be doing that. What we did was we each picked a set of rules for a deck building exercise, and we're going to do a friendly against each other using those specific rule sets and we'll go over that later but to get back to the interview here until shadow king ruins it all well True. we don't talk don't about shadow lane. king yeah just he, one and you run luke cage it's fine nobody with everything's fine this so is we, a perfect scenario <laughs> yeah we had a huge ota last week what are your initial thoughts uh i think the biggest hit is angela uh out of all of those changes i think the sauron doesn't matter the the negative one power negligible no. who cares you you don't um, think that the shuri deck took a huge hit with the minus oh, one to shuri and the minus oh, one to lost, sauron he lost two whole power on a, on two lanes that usually typically get like 28 from a, a doubled up red skull oh no what are we gonna do i, I think it's gonna survive <laughs> Okay, fair <laughs> I enough. Think, I think it's going to be totally fine without that one power. But Angela, I mean, the upward scaling that you, you lose out now, I mean, that's a lot. I, it I is. Just don't, I don't know if you're just better off running an extra tech card in that two drop space. You know, if you're just better off running a Mobius, a Luke Cage, an armor, like the, a Shadow King. I mean, the list just goes on and on, right? I mean, you could still get her pretty reliably up to like a two six, right? And a two six is still is still good, you know. So I don't think it's like a dead card. I just think it's the biggest hit of the OTA. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How, what? How do you think uh, Loki feels with a four four cost now? Um, Loki, I think still feels fine. Um, the. The, most of the time, I didn't find myself playing Loki until turn four anyways. I think the only bummer for me now is on that turn four, a lot of times I like to play a Snow Guard, a Maria Hill, a one drop, and Loki on turn four. Right. So that you get those couple extra cards in your hand, and then you you rip the Loki. So it is a little more lackluster. You have to, ha like, your hand management has to be a little bit better because you want to fill up your hand on turns one through three to have an impactful Loki on four, or maybe you just Loki on five and you figure it out on turn six of what you're doing. But I still feel like it's good. I, I think Elsa Loki is still one of the best decks out there. It, and it's also a really fun deck to play because it is it is not very clear play lines. You know, Shuri Sauron, you know what you're doing. You know what you're trying to do to win the game. 
if you're playing an Elsie, Elsie, Elsa Loki kind of deck, you don't know what each game is going to look like, you know? So I think it's still a blast. I, I really like it. Um, and I think it needed the nerf. I think 3-5 was just too stupid. Like, that's just too much. I agree. I like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I think he'd still be fine at a 5, if I'm being honest. But we'll, yeah. uh, we'll let it go. I, I, I'm not a, the hugest fan of, <laughs> of Loki. I know a lot of people like him, so I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> no, I mean, we, that's the thing, though, is that it's like we can all have our, our different opinions of what we think is good. Yeah. My thing is, do you think Loki is unhealthy for the game or do you just not enjoy it? Um, no, I don't, I don't think it's unhealthy. I, I like that it adds a different dimension to the gameplay and gives people a different way to engage with the game. I do feel that the power is so strong that if you do it so early, especially coupled with um, Quinjet, that it, it, it just gives you a, a unfair advantage, uh, you know, against somebody who's playing it straight up, right? Who's not, who's not cheating a uh, cost or whatnot. Yeah, and, and that's where it's like, if you do have Quinjet down and you can Loki on curve and they don't have Mobius, Right. I mean, GG, right? You just you might as well just handshake across the table and say, I'll right. see you on the next one. It's, and that that's kind of like the those the crux of that is why I have an issue with wave, because when you couple wave with Mobius, it's just it's freaking broken if they don't have another Mobius. Yeah, so that's where it gets interesting because it's like, all right, there is the tech card, but you can never tech for everything. Right. And that's the point of the game. Like, you don't want to be able to. Yeah. have a game balance that way but yeah it, it, at this point i don't think it's necessarily unhealthy for the game and so i'm happy with it and i think that there are enough competitive decks that there's such variance mm -hmm. in the meta it's not like one of those trading card games where it's like these are the only four decks that are going to perform well correct that's never been a case in my experience with marvel snap and i like that a lot have you done any messing around with spectrum yet only a tiny little bit, but I definitely want to play some Wong going soon. That's oh, on my list. Greedy. Yeah. Greedy super Wongers. Great. Dude, there's so super, much rogue going great. around. I, I, I'd oh, be scared yeah. to be running that list. Yeah, so there's a few different lists. Um, they're just, I think cam best or somebody just tweeted about like a thanos ongoing spectrum kind of list that looks fun and it's not super greedy with Wong or anything. You're just getting a lot of a lot of good power spread out along the um all over the place and i do also like that you have another good way to get power into like a professor x lane or something which i think professor x has become a controversial card recently people are arguing all about him do you, do you like him i think he's great yeah i i think he's good uh, do you think, think he's healthy for the game uh i do personally i i think that control cards regardless of how you're controlling the, the flow of the game should exist. I mean, you, it, cheating out the Professor X on four, I mean, it's a it's a valid strategy. And sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. Um, you do run a risk too, where if you're not, you're playing him on five, your opponent might might get you. They might just put down something bigger there and then you play the Professor X and, right. and then they give you a thumbs up because you Professor X <laughs> a lane that they're about to win. <laughs> Do you do you think the game should have some counter to w after he's played, aside from Jeff, right? Because yeah, aside from Jeff, and I, the counter there, I guess, is like Claw. <laughs> okay. If you're running Claw, I don't know. I don't know what else would be a good counter that wouldn't just make him a little pointless as a card, you know? Well, I mean, you'd Try have you'd probably have to like. I don't That's know, a good part. put like a Cosmo yeah. in there or something. Yeah, and like chat saying, uh, you know, Tribunal, Blue Marvel, Claw, Mr. Fanta, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I think people get a little, people who don't have Jeff get a little frustrated more because, you know, you just don't have a way to get into that lane. Um, but ultimately, I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. It really is only being ran in Thanos lists. So it's like there's one deck archetype that's running this one card that can perform well in those lists, but 
you still run a risk that you could whiff and lose a lane yourself that you can't that you can't touch either, you know? Right. All right. Yeah, we need to get everybody Jeff. <laughs> if you could delete one card from existence, what would it be and why? Oh, man. You know, I, I thought about this question a lot, and I think right now it's a card that I play often and is really powerful in, like, discreet ways, but... I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad if it went away, and that's America Chavez. Wow. It's, yeah. Really? Yeah. Why do you want her to go away? It's not that I want her necessarily, but I'm curious what would happen if that if that effect just was gone. Because deck thinning is such a powerful effect in a, a 12 card deck, you know? Like this isn't this isn't a, ga a card game where you're running 40 or 60 cards like so many other trading card games are. You right. know, we got 12 cards and Chavez pushing out your combo pieces earlier is really OP, like like Joe Schmo was saying, like it's really, really strong as an effect. And so I, I don't fault anybody for running Chavez in their list, but it does take away a little bit of that variance in deck building. That's one extra slot that could be filled by a bunch of different cards. You as the player, then you might be incentivized to either snap, not snap, retreat, stay in based off of the, well, what if, what if I pull this card on turn six, or what if I don't pull this card on turn six? Whereas in a lot of these situations, like you know what your turn six draw is gonna be. So you can make that decision a lot more prematurely. And I don't, I don't know, I, I like the chaos, <laughs> you know? So the flip side to that is if, if you're someone who likes to play very combo centric decks that rely on a very specific set of pulls. It's or, super helpful. Right. And now and we're going to be removing that from the game. I, I I don't know that they'll all go away, but I feel like the the list will move towards like a generic overall power list as opposed to like, you know, crazy combos. Well, hear me out. And as a yeah, sure. Mac and Matt, how do you say that? Mac and Matt? Masimati. Masimati. Just call him Masi. Masima Masi. Yeah. Like there might be a rework tomorrow. So this conversation could be completely changed by yeah. this time tomorrow. You guys but robbed I, my question for later, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, if you got rid of that Chavez effect, I feel like it opens the door for other deck thinning effects. So we can modify some other cards to also have deck thinning elements. Like here's one of the ideas I had. I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but if you took a card like Nightcrawler, where yeah. its effect read something along the lines of, if on turn two, this card is still in your deck, play it to a random location at the end of turn two. So then so now, he's, he's like uh, M'Baku, but turn two M'Baku? Exactly, and he teleports out of your deck, and he shows up somewhere on the field. You can move him where you need to or whatnot, but it just... And, and if you draw him on turn one, then or if you draw him on turn two, then he's just nightcrawler you know but it, it opens the door for us to have a few more creative ways to have other cards give deck thinning abilities outside of just a nine power card that comes out on turn six and i think that could be really fun i agree um speak i brought up mbaku i think they need to make it so that the dude can jump out of your hand as well not just the deck 100 percent like Such an easy that, I think that's like an easy fix that like just makes him usable because drawing yeah. him and playing him and having to play him is like, ah, like, yeah, you do a specific thing and you're not doing the thing. Or on the flip side, what if they just made Quicksilver like Agatha, where he doesn't just start in your opening hand. He's an additional card to your opening hand, you know? Oh, that's dope. I like that a lot. Now, you draw your your original cards and then Quicksilver comes running or he's the first one there, if anything, like before you even draw your cards, Quicksilver's already already there. He's ahead of the pack. And then you draw your opening cards then you draw for turn one. Dude, like that's solid. I like that idea a lot. 
So now it, I, that's where I think if we got rid of the Chavez effect, it just opens the door for some of these other cards to shine and give you a powerful, because again, I don't think deck thinning as an effect should go away. I just think it'd be really cool to see some other cards do it. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's 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 move on. If uh, I did that one, Spotlight Caches. Yeah. What, yeah. What do you like about it? And what don't you like about it? And then conversely, sorry, there's a three-parter here. How would you oh, improve them? Yeah, so, all right. So let's start with what I what I do like about Spotlight Caches. I do like that if we just look at the data, it's putting more cards in players' hands. Like more unique cards are getting into players' hands. I think Without that's Without a doubt, yes, 100%. And I think that's the biggest thing that I like about it. <laughs> okay. And I think that's kind of where it ends. Um <laughs> Okay. But uh oh, what did average solo players here average solo plays? What about a Thanos rework? Oh, okay. That would be really cool. Those would be cool effects. Sorry, I got distracted by chat here. What was the follow-up okay. question that? What are we going with what I would what I dislike about it or what I would change? Uh both of those actually. Yeah. So the biggest thing that bugs me honestly is that you can open up a variant for a card you already own before opening up a card you don't own. And yeah. that's the part that honestly bums me out the most. And I understand completely that you can save up your spotlight caches to make sure that you're opening them on weeks that are strategic for, you know, I don't own any of these three cards. Right. Open your spotlight caches then. And I think that that's dope. But at the same time, not everyone is as on top of it as you and I might be or or our friends in the chat might be sure. because not everyone plays this game like all the time. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of casual players and those casual players are necessary for the health of the game. But the fact that you can't even see the release schedule anywhere natively in the game throws me for a loop. You know what I mean? Like, so now I have to know that I should be saving these purple res reserves, like these purple caches right. for a future date for cards that I don't know where they're coming unless I go to a third party platform and look up what the release schedule is and then remember what that release schedule is and then not click the button, you know? So uh, I just think it'd be a super easy addition to the game to just put in the next three, four, five you know, that are scheduled and just list their, their dates right somewhere in the app. So then there's no excuse for players to go, oh, I didn't know what was coming next. It's right there for you, you know? Yeah, I mean, so, they have so many locations to go and read stuff about the game, right? There's the website, there's the Discord, there's the in-game news. Like, you're, you're, so you're saying a platforms. consolidated area would, yes. would benefit the game greatly. I, I mean, even if in that news and update section that just scrolls through on your home page, whether you're on your phone or you're or you're on PC, mm -hmm. you could easily just put the spotlight release schedule. Right. Like, okay. and I think that would solve a, a lot of the issues there. And I don't know, maybe there is a reason why they they don't want to make it so that you get new cards before you even have the variants offered to you. And, and maybe that's a financial decision somewhere that is way above our pay grade to figure out, you know, because they want people to, to buy credits. If they didn't open up the card that they wanted in their spotlight cash, they want them to spend money because if you're, if you're just playing free to play, you're probably only getting one right. per cycle. Right. So that, that could be a part of it. And I understand the game's got to make their money. I just, I wish they leaned in more to making their money on the variant side than making their money on the base card side. Agree, 100%. So, now, if, if they instituted a mechanic where if you used one spotlight cache, it could be any of the four, but uh, it guaranteed you the new card on the second one. So, like, the first one was a 25% chance, second one guarantees you the new card. Would that solve the problems with spotlight caches? Well, I think that that one random card, you know, where you don't know what it's going to be and you, it could be a card that you already have and yet you get exchanged for tokens. I think if that 
still is there, then I don't know if you necessarily need what you're mentioning, you know, because then you can still open your one and you could get a card, a random card that you already own and just get tokens. And that's what you got. You know, you didn't get a new card. You just got some tokens. True, but Which, you you do earn boxes just by playing the game. It's it's free, right? So, yeah. I mean, you, it the we're talking about the uh, the the time it takes to accumulate may accelerate with more money being poured into the game, but technically you you could be a free to play player with this system. I I don't think they can give you like they have to have some randomness to it. At least some, right? I just think yeah. they're too greedy with it, is, is what my take is. And Masi, don't get me started with the fire chicken being in the spotlight variants last week. Yeah, I, that I was bullshit. It. That was bullshit. I, three of us in the Discord, box one, fire chicken. Me too. That, that, make that four. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. And I, and, and and I just, like Dan Hips, but that one sucks. Yeah, and that... That's where another part of me just, uh, I don't know, man. I know that there's a lot of Dan Hip stands and they absolutely love their Dan Hips, but it would be super cool even if there was like a weekly vote of what should be the variants that are offered in spotlights. Oh, the they're not going to they do did, that. <laughs> that would be way too much work. They would never yeah. do it, but just like maybe just not a card that's super controversial, you know, oh. like i'm glad they're not pixels but there are some dan hips that i put in the pixel category yeah like the fire chicken that, that like one's the fire horrible chicken. that one's 100%. pretty good you said your favorite card is silver surfer that is the worst dan hip that maybe the worst variant in the game sorry dan hip if you're listening i doubt he is <laughs> i mean pixel atuma is pretty pretty ridiculous too yeah so yeah uh, I, I think the Minecraft variant right the, there is a step in the right direction. I'll say that. Like, I, I definitely think it's a step in the right direction of adding more cards that players have access to. Um, I, I think it came at the cost, though, of tokens becoming a premium currency now, basically, where yep. you really don't get a significant amount of tokens without buying bundles. And you could get token okay, shot. On the flip side, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but. No, go ahead. If you're doing like those 700 uh cost variants in the shop and you accumulate the 10 getting the like because i'm doing that just with the gold they give you from the season pass and by playing the game and i'm yeah. able to almost do it every season get the 2k tokens that's a great way to do it i don't know if people are u utilizing that but it's uh it's yeah. very good and that and that is i think the the most reasonable way to do it and you're definitely still going to get a meaningful amount of tokens but the point i was getting at is that the token shop is like your one option for player agency and what cards you want to add to your collection it's like yeah. the one time where you get to systematically choose i want this piece of candy because it makes the most sense with the rest of the cards that i own and I it, it bums me out that that system is a little bit more inaccessible in exchange for spotlight caches are you season three complete no not yet oh so you you still get the free card every I month still get the free card but and that's where i definitely empathize though with other season or series three complete players because there hasn't been a series drop in so long that that's just been an empty hole for months and like, i've never claimed a free card out of that system and that's really frustrating <laughs> like, that's that's super sad and i and i'm sure there's been because there's been a lot of pressure from the the player base on second dinner and new verse to be like hey what the heck is going on with series drops so yeah. i have a feeling sometime within the next i want to say month there'll be some sort of announcement about it but i'm hoping that the announcement is what we want to hear <laughs> right also where you are the know? extra emotes that they displayed back in like february yeah, I'm kind of lost on that too. You know, I I don't know why they teased it if they weren't ready, and also why they teased it and then haven't said anything about why they're not releasing it. But who knows? It also slightly worries me that that's going to be another for purchase thing. But it, but I also I guess I don't care if somebody wants to spend their money on emotes like you do you live your life i'll be a little bit bummed though if you open up an emote from a collector's reserve instead of a new card when you're not pool three complete oh bro 
don't get me started on avatars and titles i'm good on all of that you know if now it's avatars titles credits a hundred tokens medals uh, uh, how many currencies does this game have so many yeah you know like and, and let's just tickets oh yeah thank you i didn't even think about that tickets, tickets. unbelievable gold yeah so that that's where i'll just be a bit bummed if those emotes come out and they're released in that way if it is though a thing where it's like an emote bundle where it's for purchase if you want it and it's totally optional i'm fine with that make your money you know what i mean i, I want them to ha make money and have a good game i just want the aesthetics to be the monetized things and the right. cards that you actually enjoy the game with to be a little bit here you go cheaper that's it yeah more accessible, more accessible. Now, yeah. It, they, they've come a long way i mean they, it, you oh, sure any new releases you just never got before this year like if you played yeah. early last year like anything that got released like dark hawk if you weren't a whale you just didn't get and like charm i'm saying like it'd be super cool if emotes were another thing that you could buy with medals from your conquest shop yeah. like it'd be dope if there were a few more uh, reward options from the conquest shop because you want to incentivize people to if they're not super focused on grinding ladder like you want them to play conquest then and then have some meaningful rewards and fun stuff to come out of it the ladder rewards kind of suck too yeah um and i but i will preface, not preface. <laughs> except the 500 gold at 90 that's like Woo! Thank you. Yeah, that one's dope. Yeah. Um, but you don't, to make it clear, anybody watching, you do not need to be like Series 3 complete. You don't need every card in the game to play this game competitively. Like you don't need to have every single card under the sun to get to infinite. And I think a lot of people, you know, conflate the two where they're like, well, I don't have all the cards and I can't get all the new stuff because this BS system and murmur, murmur, I'm mad. Right. And that's why I didn't get to infinite. And it's like, I was with you until you said that last part. All you right. Know? So we're running a little behind. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip Let's the next going. question. We have werewolf by night coming out tomorrow. Snap or pass? Oh, that's a snap for sure. That's not, that's a double snap. Me too. I think he's going to be great. What list are you going to try to put him in first? I'm going to try and make just like a traditional move list um, and really just lean into the dagger, the human torch, the vulture, the Doctor Strange cloak. Like, I'm just going to lean into the whole thing because I okay. do think it'd be really fun to have this werewolf bouncing around all over the place. And then at the end of the game, you can play a Heimdall on the right lane and he's not by himself. <laughs> and someone comes to hang out with him afterwards, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. I like and that. The Heimdall has also been sitting on the back burner for how long now? I mean, like, when was the last time you saw a Heimdall in game? Uh, yeah. It's because, be honest with you, half the time I see them now, they lose the game by Heimdalling. Yeah. And uh, like Topper just said, it's going to be really interesting then if if you drop a kingpin now and it's a little bit of a threat where it's like, oh, you have Werewolf by Night out. I dropped kingpin here. If you play an on reveal on this location, your werewolf's dead. It's going to be kind of fun. A little spicy. A little spicy. Yeah, so I, I think he's just going to be a really creative piece to the game, just like Nico was. I, I, I really enjoy Nico. I think it's a, a blast card. There's so many creative ways you can use it. I think werewolf's going to be the same. I'm going to try him in a traditional move, but I don't think he even needs to be in just a traditional move. I think there's a ton of decks you might even be able just to splash him into. I'm excited to see him in a surfer list, you know? Not yet. Wait till Gladiator comes out, and then we can really evaluate. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of fun potential in that card. I'm super excited about it. I probably yeah. won't have a lot of time tomorrow, but I'll probably stream the release of it for a couple of hours just to toy around with it. Very and then cool. I'll just see what other people are doing and copy their deck list. <laughs> and that deck, that's that's what I'm about. I just, I'm just a pilot. All Me right, too. so what are you looking for from Marvel Snap in year two? What do you want Second Dinner to do? Yeah, I want more community events. I want more uh, opportunities for tournaments that are hosted by them, like the same way they did. Um, what was the, the creator name of it? clash? Want... Creator clash. Like I yeah. want more stuff like that. That's my yeah. that's my big thing. I want more Twitch drops. I want monthly login rewards, like every day leading up to thirty to something awesome. 
I yeah. want uh, definitely more in the Conquest shop. Like, I, I really just don't give a rat's anymore about Conquest. The They should definitely be doing seasonal changes to that whatever avatar effect it is. Like, that same swirly thing every time is like, once you get a few, it's... Mm. Yeah, I feel I'm you good. on that too. Um, it would be nice to have some variance there. Yeah. Uh, they need more rewards in that conquest shop. This is like a completely side note, but it made me think of like when Mr. Sinister was the uh, uh, the variant reward. Mm. It really bums me out that card tokens don't have the variant as well. And so that's another thing that i hope new first that i hope that they second dinner them do yeah. in the near future which they did with squirrel girl for the zombie variant and it's yeah. super dope it's it is awesome it's, it is super good but why on my beautiful alex ross dr doom are those doom bots just like the blandest of bland you know so i'm like hook it up there for me a little bit but yeah i i think just more community engagement stuff and if there were ways inside of the app whether it be guilds or a friend list or something it'd be really cool to even be able to create your own like profile where somebody could search you up in game and they could see like you could you could yourself post like these are my top three deck lists right now almost like your myspace top 10 you know nice. that you stick up there and then it'd be it'd be nice to also be able to share your collection with somebody else because i don't know about you but then the, the amount of times that i've gotten asked the question of like hey what can i replace for this what kind of a deck list can i build when i don't have all of these cards It'd be so nice if you could just share your, your collection with somebody and be like, "These are." The I'd like to have. be able to spectate my friends' games. Spectate would be super dope too. Um, like, like when yeah. when I'm not streaming, right? Like, so like if I wanted to see Mossy play, I could be like, "Ooh, let's see what Mossy's doing." Yeah, and I'd be and like, oh, "Okay, he's running that surfer list against blah blah blah." Like, why can't we jump in and out of people's matches and see? And I think you have to be a little cautious with that on, you know, people cheating. You want to make sure that sure. I don't have the game open on my computer and on my phone. And like I'm, I'm playing against somebody and I go search them so I can watch them while I'm playing them, you know. So you have to be a little careful I with see. that. And I also don't know how much a spectator, like how much... Um, how much lift it is for them to host that kind of a service, you know, sure. that's a lot. So it's like, I wonder if that's just too much bandwidth, too many servers, too many technical things that I don't understand that would be difficult to facilitate, you know, I feel that, but I still just want it. it. Yeah. I still want it. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that I can't go like, hey, Obi, let me show you all of my variants and I could yeah. just like send it to you is a bit of a bummer. I like that. Or you could like pin your top five variants. Yeah. Like like uh, Ma Massey just said, displaying your favorite variants or splits. Yeah. Your, your favorite deck list that you have at the time, like whatever it is. I think those would be really cool things that uh, that a lot of the community would enjoy. Your infinity borders like metals. Yeah, stuff like that. It'd just be, it'd be really nice to interact with each other a little bit more outside of just playing a game. You recognize their name. You give them a Spider-Man point, and that's about it. They are bringing in an achievement system, Masi. Uh, it's called the Prestige thing. They announced it in... What does that mean? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember because it just like glanced over it but th there's going to be some sort of prestige system built in with regards to variants and splitting variants and some sort of reward system associated with that is what they mentioned uh in the i think it was in the roadmap update oh yeah but yeah, well, we don't it's really radio know silent there. yeah there's like there's nothing on it i just know they they, they mentioned it and it's maybe a thing Okay, yeah. uh, last question, and then we're going to get to the friendly battles where Sal and I are going to battle each other using uh, decks that we created ahead of time uh, with very specific rule sets. So the first one is a ladies-only deck where we only allowed to use ladies in the Marvel Snap collection. And then the second one is move-only uh, where we only ch uh, did <laughs> $1,000 a game. No, bro, I'm, no. I'm broke. You win. All right. So last question. Patch tomorrow. 
What's your biggest wish list? Um, I don't know if I necessarily have a wish list. I think my my main thing is I I hope that <laughs> I can keep up with all of the changes. <laughs> <laughs> that when that patch comes out tomorrow that I'm not like, oh my god, I have to relearn the game again. <laughs> bruh. Come on, bruh. That, outside of that, um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything right now that feels like super over-the-top oppressive. I'm like, god, I hope they change this as soon as possible. I, sure. I, anything on your end? Um, I want some strong guy love. I really do. Cool. I He needs yeah. to be changed. Make him yeah. so he gets the plus power for every card that's missing from your hand. And, that and would be cool. That way it doesn't have to be like an all or nothing. Like you still get value by having cards missing from your hand. Yeah, that's a great yeah, that's a great idea. I mean shoot, that could get out of hand. Like you'd have to do it plus one, right? Like plus one for every card missing from your hand. No, but... you you could yeah, man, well, whatever it is. You you can adjust it so that he still gets the value if you're missing the entire hand right yeah, like that, so he gets the 10 or 12 whatever it is that you want but just make it scale per the card however the math works out yeah i, I think that's a great idea that'd be super cool to see i want a 2-2 two -two electra that that snipes two cost cards that would be disgusting <laughs> that'd be so awesome electra be everywhere dude oh yeah uh what else um that's probably over here. my my biggest wish list right now. Angel needs some love. Punisher That's... needs some love. So you're more focused on the buffs than the nerfs. Yeah, man. I I want to bring cards up, not knock them down. That stuff's boring. Well, then you got to be a little careful because then if everything gets too out of pocket, you know, you got to do that in stride. Otherwise, things get a little wild, huh? I don't think so, man. I... The, here's why I prefer buffs over nerfs is because it gives people that aren't collection complete that have those cards that nobody else uses a new toy, True. right? Like it's like True. you get a new card, right? Because they're viable yeah. again. You can you could play with it again, and yeah, I I, I don't know. I I, I think uh, right uh, was it rising tides lift all boats or whatever whatever the saying is. See, my, my only concern with that is that at some point in the game as a whole, if all you're doing is mainly buffs and not a whole lot of like nerfs, is that the game can get kind of out of hand. And this is coming as a former Yu-Gi-Oh player where then the game was manageable. And then you ended up with like a five page essay in APA format on every single card. <laughs> it just got too complicated. Sure. I mean, so you get, there's got to be some balance there, but I'm with you. It'd be a lot nicer for them to just revitalize cards that are sitting at like a 2% play rate if they're right. lucky. And not yeah. everything needs a rework. Like you could just change Punisher's power plus instead yeah. like plus one to plus two and then instantly he's great. Well, now Glenn did talk about this recently in the in the Discord server, where somebody was asking about Namor specifically, about like when are some of these pool one cards going to get a buff? And he made it pretty explicitly clear that some cards are meant to be beginner cards. Sure. Not all cards are meant to scale to the highest level of gameplay, and I understand that. You know, Punisher is an iconic card; it's a staple of Marvel. The fact that he's not punishing anything is a travesty. You're, but you're talking about Punisher, Captain America. I mean, that's America's ass, right? Like, Captain America, you're talking about iconic Marvel cards, and he's just kind of sitting there. I was kind of hoping to see a little bit more of him. Uh, I'm just like, can you just make the guy a 2-3? I'd be so happy if he's just a 2-3, and I could just put him <laughs> in a, even a 2-2, two -two, and I could just put him in a Thanos Spectrum list. Something. What if he what if he stays the same and he just plus twos everything? That's too I think that's too broken. It is? I think so. So it's two four six, so he's a three nine. Alright, so what if you okay, take the take the top end off of his power so he's like a three seven like gladiator or uh Maximus. Uh 
I thought of a funny effect for him too, where instead of boosting your side, he boosts himself by for every card on the opposite end of that location, he chucks his shield at them and it ricochets back to him and steals one power from them. Oh. And that could be kind of fun where he's just That's like, kind of dirty. Dunk, 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 Does it ca so that would be like a negative effect? So he's like a vampire? Yeah, I mean, he he's bumping them with his shield and then boosting himself up, or or even if he gave that power to the other cards at his location too, you know, so you're still hurting the enemy, boosting up your allies. Something could be kind of fun. I really just want to sh see a shield bounce around because it's Captain America, and I just okay. want to see it. 100%. That would be dope. All yeah. right, so that I think we're going to wrap up the Q&A portion of the interviews and guest spot. And let's move let's into the it. games. 